Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Vantage Seminar. So today we have our, our last talk on the topic of heights and diaphantine geometry. And for this talk, we're very happy to have Sarah Kekoli, who's going to be speaking on fields with finitely many points of bounded height around property N. And Sarah, is it all right if we record this talk? Sure. Wonderful. And um, feel free to ask questions during the talk. Uh, Sarah, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here. Um, and thank you for organizing this event, which is it's very, very nice. Um, so as Rachel said, this is the last talk of uh, the topic heights and diaphantine geometry. And in, in the last talks, we saw um, applications of uh, the what's called the height machine um, to uh, some classical diophantine geometry problems like uh, in Philip's talk, unlikely intersections, or in Ziang's talk, uh, rational points on curves. So today I will focus on uh, problems concerning points of small height to court, and more precisely on algebraic numbers of small height. So I I was told there are many, also many students in the audience. So this this talk is intended mostly for you. So I apologize. I will recall several classical facts, or maybe facts which might be very classical for some other people in the audience. But let's let's get started. Oh. Okay. So let's uh, let me make a short introduction to, to some uh, object that we already saw in, uh, for instance, in Ziyang's talk. So uh, the veil height. So we we saw that this is a way of measuring algebraic numbers. So let's see how. Um, let me define this. So let uh, alpha be an algebraic number and take its minimal polynomial, p, p alpha of x, uh, of degree d, um, over z of x. And then uh, what is called the, the absolute logarithmic veil height of alpha, or for short in this talk, the height of alpha, is the following number. It's one over the degree of alpha times the log of this quantity here, where we have that a is the uh, leading coefficient of the polynomial, so the absolute value, you take the absolute value of the leading coefficient, and then you take the the uh, absolute value of the conjugates of alpha that lie outside the, the unit uh, disk. So this quantity here uh, in the parentheses is sometimes called the Mahler measure of alpha. Um, in, we saw in the other talks uh, other defi another definition, at least one, of uh, the height of alpha. And I'm picking this from Ziyang's talk. Uh, we saw the height of alpha, um, so he defined the height of a projective point, so over a number field, and this is given as the sum over, over the places of the number field of some log of the max of some um, the absolute values. So um, this, the definition I'm giving here is the same in, in Ziyang by taking this uh, identification. It is not difficult to, to prove. Um, so I, I wanted to to recall these two ways of defining the height because one uh, is what is might be useful for computing the height computationally. So sometimes when you give alpha to if you give an algebraic number to a computer, you are giving its minimal polynomial. So uh, this is a, a, a useful uh, formula for computing h. But what you use if you want to prove uh, theorems about the height uh, will be uh, normally will be this uh, this definition with uh, with uh, uh, with uh, with valuations. Okay, so let me give an example that we also saw in uh, in uh, Ziyang's talk. Uh, what if we take the simplest uh, um, algebraic number, so a rational number here, a over b, so a reduced fraction. Uh, then the height of alpha will be the log of the max between the absolute value of the numerator and the absolute value of the denominator. So with this simple example, one can uh, a bit explain at least this uh, slogan that H 
okay, is a measure of the arithmetic complexity on, on Q bar. Uh, if, for instance, we look at these two numbers, so one and this uh, and this uh, fraction here, uh, okay, they are almost the same, but this is a way more complicated way of writing almost one. And actually the height using this property that we just saw this example for algebraic numbers, you can see that the height of the fraction is 1,000 1, times log of two, while the height of one is zero. And this measures the fact that to write uh, one, almost one in this form, you need to store way more information. Okay, also by by the definition that I that I we have here with the Mahler measure, it's clear that H gives information on how the um, conjugates of alpha are distributed around the unit circle. So let me just make an example concretely. I took this polynomial here. What if you want to compute the height of one of its roots? Well, we are going to plot the roots of the polynomial, and what we are going to take are simply the uh, um, pink dot and their distance from from the origin, and divide by the degree taking logs, and and so we get that the height of a root of this polynomial is this number here. Okay, this was just uh, an example. Um, let me recall some properties of. H, uh, some simple properties. Uh, the first one is that uh, it behaves more or less like a log. So H of alpha to the N is the absolute value of N uh, times the height of alpha for every uh, integer N. Um, the height of a product uh, is less or equal than the sum of the heights. It is now difficult to prove using uh, the definition that Ziyang gave. Uh, the height of a sum here is less or equal than the sum, but there is this uh, log two uh, term here that cannot be avoided. For instance, if you take alpha and beta equal to one, uh, you will see that uh, actually the height is, is log two. Okay, and uh, finally, uh, it's very easy to see from this definition that the height uh, is uh, is uh, invariant uh, under Galois action. So all the conjugate of alpha will have the same height, and also that uh, this function is a positive function. Okay, so the all positive quantities here. So. Um, the function is positive, and the first question could be, okay, where, where does this function take its minimal value? So what are the algebraic numbers of height zero? If one is interested in points of small height, this might be the first good question. And uh, these are completely classified by a theorem of Kronecker, which uh, tells that um, the height of a non-zero algebraic number is zero if and only if uh, a number is a root of unit. So this is a complete classification of uh, the, the points of minimal values for, for the function h. And the first very vague question that will, uh, will be um, interesting for us in this talk is what uh, we can say on points whose height is non-zero but small. Okay, this is very, very vague. I will try to make this more precise. Um, okay, so let's start asking some more precise questions. So let be uh, be a positive real. One could ask uh, how many algebraic numbers have height at most b, okay? And it's clear that there are infinitely many of them. So we saw all roots of unity, but if you want an example, a less trivial example, uh, if you take an integer n, which is big enough, um, and you take the nth root of two, then the height of the nth root of two will be small enough. It's log two over n because of the properties of the height that we saw before. Okay, but now let's change a bit the question. So we, okay, find infinitely many points of small height, but how many uh, numbers have bounded height and bounded degree? And here the situation changes. This is a, a famous theorem of Norcott that we already saw uh, also in Phillips and Young talks, for instance. And uh, this theorem uh, tells you that 
if you take uh, an integer d, uh, we go equal to one and any positive real b, you only have finitely many algebraic numbers with uh, whose degree is bounded by d and whose height is bounded by d. Okay, Th this result um, is, is very important. Uh, any, as uh, Ziang said in his talk, any possible uh, notion of height you might want to, to define has to satisfy some Norco theorem. And uh, the, the proof of this result actually is effective. This means that uh, uh, not only um, the result proves, the, the proof gives you the finiteness, proves the finiteness, not only it gives you a bound for, uh, for the cardinality of the set, but it gives you in principle a way to find these points. And it is very important in, in uh, applications in Diophantine geometry, uh, as we saw as we saw last week. Uh, if, for instance, you are interested in uh, bounding the height of operational points on some curve, if you do that, not only will get uh, the finiteness of the set. So, if you think about high genus curves, but also an explicit list of its element of the elements of this set. So this is what Yang called uh, the effective model. Okay. Okay. So this is a uh, Norco theorem. By Norco theorem, of course, uh, if you have an infinite sequence of small points, then the degree cannot be also small. It must grow. And the question is, how? How does it grow compared to the height? And in this in this context, we we have. Uh, another result, which is not a theorem now, but it's a conjecture. This is known as Lemers conjecture, at least. And here the slogan could be a small height implies big degree. And this conjecture uh, tells, tells you that there exists some uh, positive real C, uh, such that for every alpha in Q bar, when you look at the product of the height of alpha times its degree, uh, this product is either zero or big or equal than C. So it's a sort of gap result. There is a gap for the values uh, of this product here. So um, this is known as Lehmer's conjecture, but actually this was not uh, conjectured by Lehmer. This was just a, a question, not even a question, a remark uh, of, of Lehmer in, uh, in, uh, in this paper cited here. So if you open the paper, uh, section 13, you will find this problem in the theory of equations, and the, the, it, it is not uh, asked in terms of the Mahler measure, but um, we could say that it looks at the values, possible values of the Mahler measure of polynomials in the way I defined it at the beginning. And uh, we start computing Mahler measures for uh, non cyclotomic polynomials, so corresponding to known roots of unity. And he found that this polynomial of degree 10 had the smallest uh, uh, non-trivial Mahler measure, so not, Mahler measure not equal to one. And the question, and he, he doesn't even ask, he just says, I cannot find the smallest one and some other guy couldn't either. So uh, maybe this is the smallest one uh, for non-cyclosomic polynomials. Okay, so, um, what is known about this uh, this conjecture? Um, this conjecture has been proved for many classes of, of algebraic numbers, but this is still open in general. Uh, let me just give you some known cases of, of this conjecture. For instance, uh, there are some cases in which it's trivial. If alpha is not an algebraic integer, then Using the definition from the very beginning, it, it means that uh, the, the leading coefficient uh, is uh, in the absolute value of the leading coefficient of this uh, is at least two. So uh, the height of alpha is bounded by log two over t. This is very easy. Uh, something which is uh, uh, not easy is, uh, is the result of Smith that proved that Lemmer's conjecture is true when alpha is not a reciprocal. Uh, algebraic number. This means that alpha and one over alpha are not conjugated or that the minimal polynomial of alpha is not palindromic. And there is also an explicit constant here for, for this class of algebraic numbers. 
Um, also, it is known by uh, theorem of Amoroso and David that uh, the mass conjecture has been proved for generators of Galois extensions of Q. And there is also a stronger result uh, in this case for this class of algebraic numbers by uh, Amoroso and Master. I will discuss this uh, later. And uh, uh, still the, the best Condition, there is a, the only unconditional result, and the best one is uh, still the result by Dobrovolsky from 79, who proves uh, Lehmer's conjecture up to this uh, uh, error term. So D here is, the, is for sure the degree of the algebraic number. Okay. Um, so the, 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 he also finds a constant in, uh, in, in his proof, uh, which is. Uh, which is explicit, but this was uh, ameliorated by Gutier uh, years after. Okay. As we saw uh, in uh, the previous slide, the, there is a conjecture constant for for this uh, for this uh, Lemers conjecture. It it is the it corresponds to the Lemers polynomial of degree ten. This was still uh, unbeaten. And uh, let me also um, remark, um, so related to this Lemmer's conjecture that uh, Vasilin Dimitrov some years ago proved a weak form of uh, Lemmer's conjecture, which is called the Shintz and Zasenas conjecture. Um, this states uh, the, the following thing. If it tells you that there exists some constant such that, and now if you take an algebraic integer, whose height is non-zero, and if you consider this uh, this um, house of alpha, this quantity house of alpha, which is the maximum of the absolute values of the conjugates of alpha, then uh, we you have a lower bound for for the log of, of the house, which is given in this in this way, which looks a bit like a Lemer type bound. Okay, why why this is a weak form of Lehmer's conjecture? Because uh, the the log of the house of alpha is bigger or equal than the, the height of alpha. So if you if you have Lehmer's conjecture, you also have Shinzel's assonance. Um, okay, and also let me tell you that in Dimitro's proof, uh, there is uh, um, the log two over four. The constant is explicit, and. Uh, also, I want to make some advertising. There is a very nice talk by Yuri Bilo um, on, on Dimitro's proof. If you are interested in this stuff and you really want to understand in a simple way both Dobrovalsky's strategy and Dimitro's one, it, it's a very nice 50 minutes, minutes to spend uh, looking at this talk. You can find it, this uh, on YouTube. Okay. So this was um, Dimitro, and um, just to end with Lehmer's conjecture, um, some also some years ago, uh, Broyar and Varju have proved that um, Lehmer's conjecture is actually equivalent to a conjecture in geometric group theory, which is called the uniform growth conjecture. And this conjecture states the following. Um, if you take D, um, positive integer, there exists a constant that depends only on D, such that uh, whenever you take a finite subset of matrices, vertebral matrices uh, uh, G in GLD with complex coefficients, uh, the set is finite, maybe should be also symmetric. So with the, the inverse of such matrix, every matrix in the set as, as an inverse in the set. And then you consider the following quantity, rho of S, which is defined as one over the limit of one over n times the log of cardinality of s to the n. So what is all of that? So s to the n is the set of all possible words of length and uh, um, written with elements in s, all possible products of n elements in s. And this uh, this uh, this converges, and this the limit is what is called the rate of exponential growth. Okay, if you have this, uh, then uh, this quantity uh, rho of s is either zero or bigger or equal than c. Okay, so again, this is a gap result uh, of Lemmer type here. Okay, so this is uh, 
what I wanted to say about uh, um, two, two uh, un unescapable results uh, concerning points of small height. But okay, now one could uh, make my first a very vague question a bit more precise. Uh, so these are results, Lemmer's conjecture, it's, it's a conjecture, but it's conjecture for every alpha and Q bar and Norco theorem, it's a theorem that holds for every alpha and Q bar, okay? So the question is, are there some subsets of Q bar where we can also have stronger statements than uh, these two? And what I mean by stronger statements, essentially the same statements, but where you forgot to write the degree or you put no condition on the degree. So this is a, a way to introduce two, two properties uh, which were defined by uh, Bombieri and Zanier in a seminal paper from 2001. Um, so these are called the, the Norcott and Bogomolov properties. So let's see the definition. So we they, they define them for subsets of Q bar, but I, I will stick to the case of subfields for most of my talk. So a, a subfield uh, of Q bar uh, is said to have uh, the Norcott property N if for any possible uh, real uh, positive real B, this subfield contain only finitely many elements of height at most B, okay? And uh, we say that it has the Bogomolov property B if there is some constant that now will depend on the field L, such that uh, all the element for all elements in L, the height is either zero or uh, bigger or equal than C. So it, it is clear that fields with N satisfying a strong form of Norcott theorem, huh? you forgot to write the degree, only bound for the height implies the finiteness and fields with B satisfying a strong form of Lehmer's conjecture, okay? Though this, uh, this property B was named uh, not after Lehmer's conjecture, but after Bogomolov's conjecture, which gives a, a, a similar, not completely equivalent statement for uh, small points on, on curves. And this is uh, what we saw, for instance, in Phillips and Young's talk. Okay, it is uh, it is very easy to prove uh, that uh, property N implies property B. What is uh, less easy to see is that uh, they are not equivalent. B doesn't imply N. So um, a first example uh, of this is uh, the field Q up, which is the maximal abelian extension of Q. Um, this has a property B, and this is a theorem of uh, Amoros and Dvornicic. I will come back on this theorem later, and they also give an explicit constant for, for the property B in their theorem. And clearly it has not property N because it contains uh, all the roots of unity, so infinitely many elements of height zero. Uh, if you seek for uh, some other examples of B doesn't imply N where uh, there are few roots of unity. An example is the field QTR, which is the field of totally real algebraic numbers. And these are, uh, just uh, to recall, these are all the algebraic numbers which have all real conjugates. So um, this field has a uh, property B. This is a result of Schintzel. I will come also back on this later, but it has not property N because for instance, if you take um, and then root of unity, zeta n, then zeta n plus zeta n to the minus one is totally real, but by the properties of the height, the height of the sum is less or equal than the sum of the two height plus log two, and the sum of the two is zero, so it's less or equal than log two, okay? So you have infinitely many elements of uh, bounded height inside. Okay. Um, some other examples, a very uh, a trivial example is that uh, every number field has both N and B. Uh, so they have N because of Norcott theorem, so they have B. On the other side, on the opposite side, if you look at the full Q bar, you have neither B nor N because we saw that, for instance, the nth root of two uh, have height that tends to zero. So this was... Uh, uh, what we saw before. 
So the question here is what, what happens in the middle? And more precisely, if you're given a subfield of Q bar, which has infinite degree over Q, can you decide whether it has or not a uh, property N or B? Okay, and, and this, uh, this actually, it's, a, it's, a, it's hard in general to decide. Okay, so I will try to tell you uh, some, uh, what is known and what is open about these properties. Um, so the, the, nowadays the, there are quite a lot of examples of fields with, with B and N, they have been uh, uh, studied a lot in, in the last decades since the Bombier and Zanias paper, but uh, of course, the lower, mount, lower bounds for, for the height were uh, proved uh, um, way, way before. Uh, but okay, so all the many examples that we have actually can be essentially put in uh, two families, most of the examples that we have at least. Uh, the first one is that of fields that are obtained adding some torsion, I will be more precise. Um, and the other one is that of fields that satisfy some local conditions. So I will also be more precise later about, about all of that. Okay, let me let me start with the fields that are obtained adding some torsion. And for this, uh, we try to follow the following recipe. Let's start. So you 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 take Q. Uh, and you start adding to Q all the torsion points of uh, the multiplicative torus, so that is uh, all roots of unity. So what you get is a field that we already saw, is the field Q up, the maximal abelian extension of Q. And uh, this field has um, the Bogomolov property, this was conjectured by Zanyan and then proved by uh, Amoroso and Bornicic, and it is a uh, true more generally that uh, uh, the maximal abelian extension of a number field has, uh, has the Bogomolov property. This was proved by Amoroso and Zanier in, uh, in uh, two papers, where in the second paper, the lower bound is uniform in the degree of the number field. Okay, we have B here. We clearly have not N, as we saw before, too many roots of unity. But uh, still inside this field, uh, are hiding some fields which have the Norcott property. So in particular, if you take um, a Galois extension, so, uh, a subfield of Q up, it will be automatically Galois over Q. Uh, and if you suppose that the Galois group here is a group which has bounded exponents, then uh, you get a field with the Norcott property. So this was uh, uh, proved by Bombier and Zania, even though it was stated in another way, I will tell you uh, in a few minutes uh, the precise statement. Um, so let me just recall here. So everything here, remember we, the interesting case is where this stuff uh, is, uh, is infinite. So, uh, so there will be in general profinite groups here. So recall just uh, that a group has finite exponent if, uh, there is some integer n such that every element of the group raised to the n is, is the identity of the group. Okay, so it is uh, the, the least common multiple of the order of its element, and it is fine. Okay, so some examples, uh, of course, yeah, finite extensions are bounded, ex bounded exponent, and it is simply bounded by the, the order of the Galba group. But uh, a non-trivial uh, non example is the following field. If you uh, call Q D ab the compositum of all abelian extensions of Q of degree at most D, then this extension has uh, infinite degree over Q for D bigger or equal than two. Uh, for D equal to two, you're taking all the quadratics, for instance, and this also already has infinite degree. However, and it is Galois also, it's, it's quite clear, but uh, the exponent of the Galois group uh, is also clearly bounded by, for instance, by E factorial. Okay. So, um, so the, I said this is another example of fields inside QAB with this property, but essentially these are all the examples of the fields uh, in QAB with this property. They are all subfields of guys like this. 
And more generally, um, if you have a number field, what Bombieri and Zanier proved uh, is that the compositum of all abelian extensions of degree at most d of this number field, so field that I, I call here KD ab, has the knockout property. Um, and um, something that uh, I proved with Zanya is that actually, if you take an, a Galois extension, a billion Galois extension of a number field K whose Galois group has bounded exponent, then this is true if and only if you are a subfield of, of KD up for some degree. So these are essentially all the possibility or, or fields satisfying these three are of this form. Okay, so now the question is, Okay, this was uh, cool, but what happens if we change the group G here? So let's uh, try another recipe. So for elliptic diet. Uh, so always take Q and now instead uh, add the coordinates of all torsion points of some elliptic curve defined over Q. So what you get is a field which is uh, called Q E tors. And uh, this is uh, not a billion over Q, uh, but however, uh, it has the Bogomolo property, and this is the result of a back gap. And actually, uh, it is also true that Ke tors has the Bogomolo property. So you add uh, all these uh, coordinates of torsion points of E to, to the field K, which is not uh, just a number field, but can be any Galo extension of Q with Galo group with bounded exponent. But still here, uh, you have still to take E to be an elliptic defined over Q. And this was proved by Fry. Okay, this field has not uh, the Norcott property, because of the same reason as that Q up has not. Uh, and uh, actually also the third property is true. If you take a Galo extension inside Q e tors whose Galo group has finite exponent, then uh, you get a field uh, with the knockout property. And this is something that uh, um, we proved with, uh, with Gabriel Deal uh, last year. So let me be, uh, a bit more precise about uh, about this result, um, which is a, a bit more general than this. So what what we prove with Gabriel is the following: uh, if you if you take uh, a number field and uh, you take an abelian variety defined over K, then uh, you look at subfield take L to be a subfield of K A tors. So this is the the analog definition of Q with tors, you can give it for a billion varieties. Uh, you take a, a subfield of K a tors, which is Galois and has Galois group with bounded exponent, then uh, what uh, you can what we prove is that L, your field, is actually contained in some field of the form MD ab for some number field that depends only on the data of your problem. So the number field K and the abelian variety A and, and uh, the bound for the exponent D. Okay, so the, there are two news, one bad and one good. Uh, the bad news is that uh, these are not new fields with the property N. So essentially what we proved with Gabriel is that even though uh, QETORS doesn't look a lot like QAB, actually these uh, fields, um, these uh, subfields with Gallo group with bounded exponent, um, have the Norcott property because always because uh, they are of the form uh, they are containing fields of the form uh, studied by Bombieri and Zagna. So this is the the bad news, but the the optimistic news is that this gives some a new analogy between uh, the the field Q A tors and and the field Q ab, and uh, the point is that um, the question of whether Q A tors as the Bogomolov property. So this is known when, when A is an elliptic curve defined over Q. It is open uh, to my knowledge for elliptic curves defined over general number fields and is completely unknown for uh, abelian varieties, which are not products of elliptic curves defined over, over Q. So this is, uh, this is uh, maybe uh, an optimistic uh, a new analogy in this direction. 
Okay, so let me also mention uh, that very recently, Gajda and Peterson have, um, have showed that uh, our theorem with, uh, with Gabriel holds also over, uh, when you take a BM right, it's defined over other base fields, and in more precisely for fields which are finite, finitely generated over finite fields or algebraically closed fields or, or local fields. Okay. So this, um, this was uh, what I wanted to say for fields obtained in, uh, by adding some torsion. Now I would like to discuss a bit what is known about fields that satisfy some local conditions. Um, so the let me start with property B for which more is known. So property B, we already saw one of these uh, fields satisfy some local condition. Uh, the first example is the is the field of totally real numbers, uh, and this um, this as a, as a, as property B. Um, this as as I said, this was proved by Schinzel. Uh, there was not this terminology of property B, but uh, what he proves is that if if alpha is in QTR, uh, it is non-zero and it is not uh, plus or minus one, then the height of alpha is, is one half of the log of the golden ratio here. Um, I So this, this gives, this is a very, very precise, so it's a very explicit bound, and it's also best possible, but uh, if you were just interested in a non-quantitative version of this result, just the existence of a lower bound is, can follow from uh, Bilo's uh, equidistribution theorem. Um, I don't have a lot of time, but let me say very, very roughly, uh, this theorem tells you that uh, Galba orbits of sequences of uh, points whose height tends to zero, and uh, whose degree tends to plus infinity, this must be equidistributed uh, in some precise sense uh, around the unit circle. So, in uh, of course, in Bilo's result, equidistributed is uh, is uh, is very precise. But think of any possible notion of equidistribution. It's clear that in QTR, the points are not uh, Galois orbits are not clearly equidistributed. They are they are squeezed uh, on the on the real line for any possible definition of equidistribution. So the height of this point cannot be cannot be too small. Also, let me mention that uh, if you are interested in, there is a one-page proof uh, for algebraic integers uh, um, in QTR of Schinzer result. This was given by Conan Skorupa in a paper at Journal de Trois de Nombre de Bordeaux. Um, and in the proof, uh, in, in the book uh, around the unit circle uh, by Mackie and Smith, this, they show how this uh, one one page proof strategy can be adapted to to also to non algebraic integer. Okay, um, so the this was QTR, and actually um, one of the results uh, that motivated the uh, uh, one of the results proved in the in the paper of Omir and Zania, where they defined this uh, this um, Bogomolov property uh, was to was gives essentially a piadic analog of, of uh, Schinzer result. So they, they proved in particular that the field of totally piadic numbers has uh, the Bogomolov property. So these are algebraic numbers having all conjugates now in QP. Huh? This is the piadic analog. Or if you want, you can think about, of this field as the compositum of all Gala extensions of Q in which P splits totally. Um, so they, uh, Actually, Bomier and Zanier proved uh, a result which is way more general. They they proved the following. If you take a Gala extension of Q, uh, L over Q, so always think about infinite stuff here, and you call S of L the set of primes where uh, L has bounded local degrees. So what does it mean for bounded local degrees? It means that for every P in this set, uh, you can embed L in a finite extension of QP. Or if you want, that for any valuation of L that extends the periodic one for P in this set, when you complete, you get you get a finite extension of QP. Okay, take uh, take an infinite Galois extension, take S of L this set of primes. If 
uh, this set is not empty. If uh, L has bounded local degree some, somewhere, then uh, you, you get a field with the Bogomolov property. And moreover, more, they, they prove also, what they prove also is a, a lower bound for the minimum of the height of the element in, the, in, this, in this field. And this lower bound is given by the following, the following one half of the following sum. Uh, you sum over the primes over which the local degrees are bounded, uh, and you uh, and you sum this quantity, where here E p and F p are, of course, the the ramification index of L p and the inertial degree of L p. They are uh, they are well defined uh, because the extension is Galois, and you are summing precisely where these numbers are 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 finite. Okay, so this uh, just keep in mind that there exists this lower bound and that there exists this result because we will come back in a few minutes on this. Uh, let me, before moving on, let me mention also um, that uh, Amoroso David and Zanier prove a result that uh, um, generalizes both uh, this, uh, this uh, result by Wambier and Zanier on fields with bounded local degrees and both uh, the fact uh, that uh, um, an abelian extension of a number field has a Stibogomolov property. So what they prove is the following. If you take a number field and you take a Galois extension of it, and you call Z the center of the Galois group. Now, if you look at the subfield of L, which is fixed by the center, if this field has bounded local degrees, then uh, L has the Bogomolov property. So why it is it, it implies clearly Bombieri and Zanier's theorem because if L itself has bounded local degrees, its subfield fixed by the center will also have. Uh, but um, it also implies that K up clearly has uh, the Bogomolov property because in this case the center uh, for being an extension, the center is the full Galois group. So the the subfield fix will be just a number field which has clearly bounded local degrees uniformly at every prime. Okay, so um, this was a generalization of these two, and I would like now to move to, to the Norcott property N. So what we saw uh, in, uh, in, um, in the chapter fields obtained at Vintotion is that these fields of the form KDAB have uh, the Norcott property. So, this is the compositum, again, of all abelian extensions of k of degree at most t. This is what, this is what we saw. And um, this uh, result, so the, there was not a lot of uh, result uh, in, for, for a while about this Norcott property until Martin Widmer, oh, sorry, this is, should be uh, 2011, I'm sorry, uh, proved uh, a result which uh, tells you the following. So take a tower of number fields, uh, and as the tower of number fields such that um, at each non-trivial step in the tower, the relative discriminant have sufficiently rapid growth, in a sense which is, of course, made precise by, by Martin. Then when you look at the union of your tower, you get a field with an R-code property. Okay. So, um, so this is a, this is a, a result on an Orcode property in some other direction, which is, uh, which is, um, we, so th this was giving the first new examples of fields with an Orcode property, which are infinite extension and which are not of this form were given in this paper. And actually very recently, Martin also proved a new criterion, which is always based on discriminant growth that uh, implies both his previous result and that also covers in some sense uh, Bombier and Zanier's theorem. So the question is here, uh, okay, are there other criteria or other results on, on this Norcott property? Um, so now let's, let's go back to, to B. So let me just uh, recall what we just saw in uh, some previous slides. We saw that fields with bounded local degrees at some prime have the Bogomolov property, and also that, uh, more precisely, that there is this lower bound by for the limit proved by Bombier and Zanier. Okay. 
So right after this uh, proving this stating this theorem, Bombier and Zanyan made uh, some remarks. The first remark that they make is that uh, if uh, this sum here, so this sum might be infinite because if the local degrees are bounded at all primes, uh, why not this sum can could be infinite? But if this sum is uh, is divergent, uh, then uh, the field L is also the Norcott property. This is essentially uh, Bolzano Weierstrass. This the mean for would not be finite otherwise. Uh, okay. And they also remark that if you have a number field, then the sum is divergent here. And uh, they more or less ask the question of whether the, the converse is true here uh, or whether are there infinite degree extensions uh, of, of Q for which the sum is divergent? And they seem to suggest this to be unlikely. And okay, one could even go further and say, okay, let's say that there are infinite extensions such that the sum is divergent so that I have the Norcott property, but can one find some that uh, have the Norcott property not because of the previous results known on the Norcott property? So the question could be, is the divergence of this sum covering new cases uh, is really somehow a new criterion for the Norcott property. And uh, with, uh, with Arno Femme, some years ago, we, we proved, um, we, we answered uh, this question in the, affirma in the affirmative. Uh, so we, we proved uh, that actually there are some more precise sense, uh, there are many Galois extensions uh, of Q, uh, which have infinite degree over Q, uh, such that the sum of Bombier and Zanier is divergent, and they, are, they do not satisfy the, the condition required by Bombier and Zanier's theorem, so they, they are not subfields of, of, this, of this kind of fields, or uh, they are not obtained as the union of a nested tower of fields with sufficiently rapid growth of the discriminants. Uh, so mm, the, the, the first criterion of Wittmer. And more recently, we also show that uh, our construction resists even to the new uh, stronger criterion of Wittmer. Okay, in, in, the, last, in the last few minutes uh, of my talk, I would like just to present some uh, some uh, two open problems, I choose two of them, which are quite easy to state, one on, on property N and one on property B. Let me start on property N. So this is a quite, uh, a quite old problem now. So this was essentially, um, this originated in the paper of, of Bombieri and Zania. So what we, what we saw, uh, we saw that the QDAB has, uh, has uh, the Norcott property. This can be uh, this can be rephrased by saying that, as we saw, a billion extensions of Q whose Galois group with as bounded exponent have n. And now, okay, the question is, can we remove some of these hypotheses? Of course, you cannot remove uh, the boundedness of the exponent because it's not true that a billion extensions of Q have an awkward property. Think about Q ab. But what happens if we remove here a billion? So is it true that the boundedness of the exponent of the Galois group implies the Norcott property? And uh, this, is, uh, this is open. And this is uh, open in the in the largest sense of uh, of the word. So if you look at the simplest case, maybe is the following: you take Q3 to be the compositum of all number fields of degree at most three. So something very concrete. And the question is whether this field has uh, property n, and even this is is still unknown. Okay, Q, Q2, of course, um, is a billion, so it's a compositum of all quadratic extensions, but Q3 is the first non-abelian example, and, and we don't know, we don't know anything here. Okay, so this was for uh, property N, and for property B, um, uh, there is a problem that I like a lot, and it is the following. So uh, let me go back to the very beginning uh, to Lehmer's conjecture. So we, I told you at the beginning that Lehmer's conjecture has been proved for generators of Galois extensions. This is a result of Amoros and David. 
And I promised that I would come back on a stronger result by Amoros and Master. So uh, Amoros and Master, they proved the following, even the following uh, stronger results. And they proved that if you take any positive epsilon, there is some constant C of epsilon such that uh, if alpha is not a root of unity and it is a generator of a Galois extension, then um, the height of alpha times the degree to the epsilon is bigger or equal than C of, the, of epsilon. So this is a very strong uh, Lemaire type bound, of course. Um, and so this might prompt the question of whether, uh, if you look now just at the set of generators of Galois extension, maybe the set could have the Bogomolov property. Okay, so this is this this result of Amoros and Master could uh, could uh, could raise this question. And a way to look um, at this uh, at this problem is okay. One of the possible ways is okay is to cap by Galois groups. So one can study the subsets uh, of of the set S, uh, let's say S G, which are the given by the Galois the generators of Galois extensions whose Galois group is equal to G. So for every group, you you try to find to prove some Bogomolov property at least for the group. Uh, the result of Amoros and Varnich for QAB can be rephrased by saying that uh, S G has the Bogomolov property when G is a billion. For abelian groups, it's okay. And actually, Amoroso proved uh, that if uh, if G is a SN, so he could not prove that all these sets, the full set of generators of SN extensions has the Bogomolov property. But if you just look at some generate some uh, classes of generator, which are essentially those obtained by by the primitive element theorem, so quite classical const construction. So you take uh, generators which are either products of conjugates, uh, it needs them to be unit here, or linear combinations of conjugates uh, with integer coefficient. Then not only you have the Bogomolov property, but the height of such generators tends plus infinity. And this was uh, recently. Um, uh, done also uh, for the group uh, AN, same conclusion for this class of generators by Jean Brun. Uh, Amoroso in his paper also makes a conjecture that uh, this, what he found, the fact that the, the height of his generator goes to plus infinity is true more generally for generator of Galois extensions of group SN. And uh, this is essentially what is known on, on this question, and that this problem is largely open. Okay, I think this was everything I wanted to say. I'm sorry if I run over time. Thank you. <laughs>